We now know why the FPIU system is superior to a VAV system, but we don't know exactly how an FPIU system works. A good introduction is to look under the hood at the electrically commutated motor, or ECM. The ECM allows FPIUs to deliver steady or modulated airflow to each space. It responds to space sensors, so the discharge airflow is modulated between lower and higher values based on zone cooling loads. This response is made possible by a computer chip that ensures greater efficiency over the motor's operating range and eliminates the need for a variable frequency drive. This provides an automatic response as tenants reconfigure their space or add heat generating equipment such as computers or copiers. The total cooling capability is the summation of the conditioned primary air and unit coil capacities at the scheduled airflow. However, unlike the original carrier induction system design, the FPIU can deliver sensible cooling independently from the primary airstream. Each FPIU meets approximately one watt per square foot of lighting, typical solar and building shell loads, and two and a half to three watts per square foot of miscellaneous or plug loads. In addition to cooling, FPIUs can also modulate a heating source, such as a unit-mounted heating coil or perimeter fin tube radiator. Mixing an optional heating coil with outdoor air results in an 85 degree Fahrenheit discharge temperature during the heating season. For the summer, mixing the cooling coil and outdoor air results in a 60 degree discharge temperature. Another technical aspect to discuss is dew point maximum value. Dew point is a combined measure of temperature and humidity levels. An FPIU is built to maintain a consistent dew point of 55 degrees from the primary ventilation air. The secondary chill water supplied to the coils of the FPIU is also 55 degrees. This results in dry coils and eliminates the need for zone condensate drains. Picture a sponge soaked in water. If the sponge goes through the central air handling unit cooling coil, it is squeezed of all moisture. The sponge is then sent into the room to soak up more moisture. The process keeps repeating, so the room remains at the consistent dew point. While different space temperatures result in different humidity levels, FPIUs modulate zones separately from each other, so the consistent dew point is maintained throughout. If ventilation air rates are maintained at 20 CFM per person, then the resulting central air handling unit cooling coil discharge temperature should be set at 48 degrees. This will support a space dew point of 55 degrees and allow for the use of 55 degree sensible chill water. The tenant should experience approximately 45 to 50 percent relative humidity with a space temperature between 72 to 75 degrees. If the dew point ever rises above 55 degrees, a minor warning symbol appears on the building maintenance computer. The system will typically adjust back to normal. However, if the dew point continues to rise, additional primary air is introduced to the space, followed by an alarm to the building maintenance computer. On a continued rise, the sensible chill water will follow a two degree offset from the set point. As long as the associated air handling unit is providing a consistent supply air temperature and volume, the humidity imbalance is quickly corrected. If the facility has a space with a higher humidity level, like a kitchen, entrance vestibule, loading dock or fitness room, the dew point maximum value would likely need to be serviced with more conventional cooling systems. Supplemental dehumidification can be provided via heat recovery chillers, water source heat pumps, or a 42 degree chill water loop. As an option, the central air handling unit return water can be reused to create the sensible loop, resulting in greater chill water delta T's and less pumping head. The sensible loop can also condition high load spaces like data centers or video conference facilities through the use of FPIUs for smaller zones or properly selected computer room cooling units for larger spaces. However, each space should be evaluated based on its individual requirements. Note that primary airflow rates may override code minimum ventilation or pressurization criteria, such as in a health clinic. Clinics may be pressurized to control infection or odor migration. Also, some spaces may exceed the FPIU's primary air damper capacity, such as conference rooms with greater than 25 person occupancies. As a result, those spaces may require supplemental air boxes or two FPIUs, not for sensible loads, but to maintain the latent removal requirements of 20 CFM per person. A final point to cover is the long-term goal of energy efficiency. 
which in the case of FPIUs is not solely a product of outdoor air and zone modulation capabilities. Real efficiency comes into play at the central plant, where the 55 degree water temperature posts high efficiency numbers over standard 42 degree systems. The higher sensible temperatures allow for more efficient chiller operation, the use of extended water side economizer hours, and the implementation of relief air heat recovery. So not only do FPIUs provide individual control over every zone of a floor plan, the long-term energy savings and superb air quality greatly contribute to both the financial health of the facility and the personal health of the tenants. At Southland Industries, we are committed to promoting FPIU systems for our clients. The government sector has been the early adopter of this new technology, and with growing energy concerns and the superiority of FPIU systems over VAV systems, FPIUs are poised to become a key US standard for commercial air handling systems. By taking the lead in implementing fan-powered induction units and training our employees in their function, Southland believes that we can support our customers' desire to achieve energy efficiency and functionality for their facilities. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about Southland Industries and our support of the fan-powered induction unit system.